Agent Smith runs his agency like this. He wakes up in the morning, he goes to Liam Otley's channel, and he sees the last video was about selling custom GPTs, and the video before that was saying how he could make money selling AI automation services. And then he scrapes a list. He sends an offer out, the same offer that was in Liam Otley's video, and gets no response, and checks his account and has zero dollars. Then there's Neo. Neo wakes up, he sees everybody is trying to sell custom GPTs, and he says, well, I'm not gonna be like those guys. I'm going to use that as bait because I will be able to sell what I want to sell that is unique on the back end. So there are three dangers that will happen to you if you start selling custom GPTs and AI services like everybody else is. First thing that you're going to have to deal with is intense price competition. When multiple businesses offer identical or very similar products, they often end up competing primarily on price. This can lead to a race to the bottom where profit margins become razor thin. Why? Because everybody's going to be trying to outshine each other by going to the bottom. The pressure to reduce prices can significantly impact the financial health of a business, making it difficult to invest in growth, innovation, and even sustain operations in the long term. What I'm trying to tell you guys is whenever you go fishing, normally when you go fish in nature, you know that you have to have bait. What is your bait if you're uh, sending an email or a DM like these other guys talking about I'm going to uh, do your AI automation or guess what? ChatGPT just released these custom GPTs and we're going to do this to your business. Everybody is sending that right now. And the problem with it is since they're hearing that from everybody else, they're going to ask you. Well, how much are you charging? And when you tell them how much you're charging, they're going to want to price shop. So instead of taking a, a, a race to the bottom, why don't you just start at zero and sell something completely different and unique that other people aren't selling? Let me give you an example. All right. So we are on my agency site. This is the profit position and agency site. And this is my audio book only versus best, which is ironically what we're talking about right now, how to be the only instead of trying to compete with everybody else to be the best. As you can see, we sell affiliate armies for 15 K uh, banks for 17. Okay. And we build a market monopoly for $197,000. All right. So what we'll do is we'll use the things that are attracting a lot of people. Like right now, there's a lot of buzz with the custom JPTs, right? But problem is people are going to either want to build them themselves because it's, it's like low barrier to entry unless you're building some super intricate, complicated type situation, right? It's super low barrier to entry if people have a little bit of time. You want to sell what people can't duplicate or replicate, can't copy. That's the stuff you want to sell because then... <laughs> You are the only one, right? Like, can't nobody price shop you? They can't say, oh, well, some other dude DM me about that five minutes ago, or I already got a guy to do that. You'll know that's BS because you have your product or your servants patented and copyrighted and nobody can copy it, right? So you'll know that's BS. So why don't you use the things that's going to draw a lot of attention that everybody else is talking about as bait? And then you just reel them in like super easy. You give that to them for free because it's like a ticket into a theme park. If your theme park is not well known, and most of you guys are just now starting your agencies and stuff, if your theme park is not well known, charging at the door when people don't know what the rides are going to be like or what the food is like, you're going to have a lot of people walk away, turn away, or try to lowball you any freaking way. So why don't you make entry uh, the entry fee zero dollars? Now when they get into your theme park, all they got to pay for is like the funnel cakes, the the fifteen dollar giant turkey legs, the the rides and the coins that they're going to stretch child or use for the arcade. So you're going to make a lot more money once they're in your environment uh, of, of products and services. So we call that the theme park product. If you have a big brand, like for example, a Six Flags or a Disneyland or something, you can charge at the door. But if you're just some type of freaking uh, go through the town carnival that block off the street every year or something like that, then nobody even knows the name. You might want to just let people walk in and go to the vendors and go to the rides and all of that. You'll make a lot more money with no friction at the dang on entry, right? So now let's go to the next thing you'll deal with if you're selling these custom GPTs and these AI automation services like everybody else. Oh, first I wanted to give you a, a, a quick story, right? So a small electronic store specializing in smartphones finds itself surrounded by larger competitors, competitors offering the same models. OK, to stay competitive, the store slashes prices, drastically reducing its profit margins. Over time, the price war leads to financial strain, making it difficult for the store to invest in inventory or marketing, eventually forcing it to close freaking down like dog. 
when you are selling the same stuff as everybody else, you're going to have to compete on price. Then since you're not well versed in the art of giving things away for free, when you do try to give stuff away for free, you're going to look desperate and people aren't going to fall for it. And eventually you're not going to have your regular customers anymore because somebody else is outshining you. And then it's going to be difficult for you to afford attracting new customers and they're going to leave. See? So don't sell what everybody else is selling. Give away what everybody else is selling and then sell what nobody else can sell. OK. All right. So next bad thing that can happen, guys, is this right here. Difficulty in building brand loyalty. OK. When products or services are similar across competitors, uh, competitors, it becomes challenging for a business to differentiate itself uh, and build customer loyal base uh, without distinct features or unique selling Propositions customers may have little reason to choose one brand over another, leading to lower customer retention rates. The lack of loyalty can make businesses more vulnerable to market fluctuations and customer churn. Think about this. When you go in a store and you buy a toothpaste, they put the toothpaste right next to all the other toothpaste brands. Every now and then is one brand that sticks out. And this is why they do all these commercials and advertising and stuff. But if you're the brand that doesn't have the money for all the, the advertising and, and the uh, standing out tactics and everything, like how are you going to make money sitting next to Crest or Colgate? Right. Them are pretty much the only ones we even know by name. It's, it's, uh, it's thousands of other toothpaste brands. Why do we only know Crest and Colgate and maybe yeah, that's all I can think of off the top of my head, right? Like that's sad. Think about that, guys. That's what you're doing to yourself right now. There are going to be the top agencies that got to this first, uh, like the Liam Otley agencies and all of those guys that, that were first movers, you know, got first movers advantage on this AI automation stuff and custom GPT stuff. Like these dudes are at the beginning of that stuff, right? So now when you start sending DMs, they're telling you, think about it. They're telling you to set up instantly. They're telling you to set up uh, um uh, your email sequences, your DMs, they're telling you to send at least 200 to 500 or 1,000 DMs every single day. <sighs> and they're giving you niche examples and stuff. Don't you think that means that they already ran through those niches? So the same scripts you're going to send, you know, uh, uh, they've already sent are the same offer. Those people that you send, why, now you're wondering why they don't read it. And then they don't respond back because they just got that same DM from them other 10,000 people that was watching that video. Think about that, y'all. Now, everybody don't take action when they watch a video, but a nice percentage of people are going to say, you know what? Let me go try that out. And the bad thing is most people all pick the same freaking niche. It sucks. Most people pick the same niche. They like all pick the same thing on niches, right? So they're sending emails, cold emails, DMs, doing cold calls, saying and offering the same thing. I can do your AI automation services and automate your business, or I can uh, set up these brand new custom GPTs that's going to do this and do that. Okay, but now, after week one, that offer is done. Now, if it was week one, week two, or something like that, now, keep in mind, I'm not saying it's impossible because SEO has been around forever, and we can still sell SEO, but it's extremely uh, difficult. <laughs> because they've been burned a lot from SEO and stuff. But every now, this is why people are telling you to send out thousands. Oh, you should be sending out at least thousands of messages per day. If your offer is unique and super awesome and they can't find it anywhere else, then, I mean, and it proven though, like proven, it still needs to be related to something that actually works. Don't just pull a magic trick out your butt, right? Um, but if it's proven and actually works, guys, but they never like been able to see it uh, or purchase it on the market before, now they are at least going to be curious about it. They're not just going to leave you on red. Can you explain a little bit more about it? Right. Oh, can I see this in action? Right. They'll ask things like that when you have something completely unique. Right. And it'll be evergreen if you keep it unique. Like my market monopoly. Nobody knows how to do the market monopoly. And it's been around for a while. And I don't have to keep making a brand new offer because it's unique and nobody else is doing it. Like I have people sign NDAs. You hear me? Nobody else knows how to do the market monopoly legally. Right. So this is the power seat that you want to be in. You want to be positioned like that. So now let me tell you uh, a story about that. So a local coffee shop offers the same blends and ambiance as numerous others in the area. Despite good service, customers drift between this shop and others. OK, now McDonald's is starting something called Mc, uh, McCafe. 
And that's supposed to be a direct competitor of Starbucks, right? I almost said Starburst, of Starbucks. Think about that. How many coffee shops do you know other than McCafe and Starbucks? Like right now, when I think about coffee, all I can think about is Starbucks. I don't, I, I've never even drunk Starbucks, but their brand is so strong. They have such great positioning that if I want coffee, if I decide I want coffee, I'm probably going to go to freaking Starbucks. And then when McDonald's come with McCafe, I'll probably go there just because of their brands. So my point I'm trying to make to you is, while you're trying to sell the same thing as everybody else, you can still make some money. But in order to like dominate entire markets, you either need first movers advantage or something completely, completely unique that slices through the competition and makes competition either competitors. I mean, makes competition either uh, uh, collaborators or makes them obsolete. What do you have that can make them either obsolete or a collaborator? Right. That's 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 it. But when you're selling the same thing. The first thing that comes to my mind, like if I need an oil change, is who's the best or what's the price? Like, you know, nowadays I don't ask what's the price, but like back in the day, I'm like, okay, there's a lot of people. Minor Key, Jiffy Lube, uh, Walmart, you know, there's a lot of people. The dude on the corner, somebody off Craigslist, I can go to to get my oil change, pause. Right? But who's the cheapest <laughs> or who does the best job? Like those, we don't want people to be able to question, you understand? Like, or, or be like, yeah, I went to blah, blah, blah. So I go to blah, blah, blah for this. No, people aren't coming to me for social media marketing. People aren't coming to me for Facebook ads anymore. People aren't coming to me for SEO anymore because I don't want them to. Like I can fight in that battle. You guys go to my SEO channel or if you've been here since 2015, you know, it's pretty much not that many people better than uh, me at SEO. And that's not a private thing. I just do things differently and I always have. Right. But why would I want to compete? Why would I want to compete when I could just be in a lane where have you ever drove on a highway at two, three a.m.? A highway that's usually congested. You know, I used to drive trucks over the road. So there's been times overnight. Or early, early morning, where there's nobody there and it's just peaceful and you just got your music playing and it's just the best thing and you don't have to rush or switch lanes or do none of that crap. That's what you're going to have to do if you're thinking about selling custom GPTs like everybody else. You're going to have to constantly be switching lanes because this is going to die out. It's already dying out. Like the first couple of videos I did on it went viral and now like it barely gets 200 views. <laughs> it's already like everywhere, right? So that's my point. Now you got to wait until something new come out. Like you were selling SEO, then you're selling Facebook ads, then you're selling uh, uh, Instagram ads, then you're selling YouTube ads, then you're selling TikTok ads, and you got to keep on jumping around, ring around the rosy musical chairs. And, all right, so what's the last danger, or last but not least, danger that you're going to have to deal with? Okay, let's see. We have limited growth opportunities. Selling the same thing as your competitors often limits a business's ability to grow and expand. In a saturated market, new custom... <sighs> Pay attention. New customer acquisition becomes more challenging and costly. Moreover, without differentiation, it's hard for a business to enter new markets or create additional revenue streams. This stagnation can hinder long term sustainability and success. <laughs> I mean, it's self-explanatory. When I uh, realized how difficult, difficult it is to compete, I read this book called The Irresistible Offer. And I told you guys about it. A lot of you guys know about The Irresistible Offer. And I noticed that even with The Irresistible Offer, if you're not offering something unique, and what, what I mean by that, like, uh, let's say SEO, right? If you don't position it, if you don't communicate it as something different, if you say the words SEO or ranking or something like that, <laughs> if you say SEO or rankings, those words right there, it doesn't matter how you position the offer unless you're giving it away for free or something like that. And it's still not as powerful as it was when it first came out. Even though SEO is probably one of the most beneficial things for a business, they've heard the offer too much put like that. So if I was going to sell SEO, it would be completely different. I would say, you know, that newspaper that you're buying ads in or that billboard that you have that's stuck on the side of the highway that you can't track and, and those customers just pass by and you don't know if you're ever going to get customers from that. I'm going to take that same newspaper or that billboard and I'm going to make it visible to everybody in the city on the web on the internet. So when they go on the internet, they can sit there. They're not going to drive past your billboard. They're, they can sit there and read your offer and call you and purchase what you have. But I'm going to make it more visible than any other billboard that's in the city for your niche. That's how I would sell SEO if I was going to sell SEO, because you got to put it in the language they understand. Because now when they search SEO, 
they'll look up all, all these like people that has been burned and all of that stuff or they've experienced it before. So you have to present it as something different. Right. Or offer something different. Like, dog, like SEO is still used in what I offer now, but I don't sell SEO anymore. Facebook ads might be used in what I offer right now. But I don't offer Facebook ads like I offer the end goal. I noticed that a lot of people aren't creative. So when I talk about my new offers and creations and stuff, people go and try to copy them. So I'm, I'm not really going to even tell you guys my new uh, uh, agency direction now. But it's not an SEO agency. It's not a marketing agency. It uses SEO. It uses Facebook. It uses marketing. It uses TikTok, Instagram and all of that to achieve the goal. But it's not a marketing agency anymore. Is something 10 times better, which is why when a company discovers us, we won't have to deal with the objections, hesitations, skepticisms and all of that stuff that you guys will. If you send them a message talking about a custom GPT AI automation, like even if I was to do outbound, which I'm, I'm moving away from, like I'm completely starting to move away from you guys won't see me upload another video uh, talking about a uh, prospect uh, like like gathering a list. And sending DMs, that type of potential, uh, that 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 type of stuff to try to get clients. Now, I might do that to get partners, <laughs> because if you're going to advertise, you should advertise for partners, because partners have your clients already, and partners have authority and trust and credibility with their, your potential clients. So, if you want clients, get the partners that have the clients. So that's what I would be prospecting for if I was you guys. Like I said, don't be an Agent Smith. Be a Neo when you wake up in the morning. Don't wake up thinking about how you can prospect so you can sell AI uh, services. Think about how you can partner with somebody that already have people interested in that type of stuff, but how you're going to position it differently and offer something way more creative. Like I'm going to give away the AI automation services. I'm going to give away the custom GPTs. That's going to flood you with leads like free leads like yo just dm somebody right now that has your potential clients already just dm somebody and tell them uh dm everybody and email everybody on your list and tell them that i'm going to give them a free custom gpt and ai automation D dog do that right now right and now all you have to do because i know y'all like damn i'm crippled but what do i sell <laughs> Be creative. Be an entrepreneur. Go and create something. Why don't you build a GPT to recommend to you what to sell after you freaking build a GPT? <laughs> Come on, man. Use your brain. Like, okay. So just simply create something, craft something that's way more valuable or something that will uh, work in tandem with the custom GPTs or the AI automation that's complimentary that other people aren't selling. So you'll have that on the back end. Make it to where uh, when they use the GPT, they need this neck. They, they need what you're going to sell for the next step. For example, uh, when you sell a website, a website is nothing. If you build it, they will come as a lie. So now people realize that their websites are ghost town. They either need SEO or they need social media to get people there. So you can give away the website, let them sit and simmer with the website for a minute and know there ain't nobody coming to it. Follow up with them two weeks later and say, how many new customers have you got since you received this website gift from us? As, as soon as they tell you, we ain't got no customers from that website, dog. I thought things were going to blow up once we got a website. Well, no, things don't work that way online. OK, so just like online uh, location, location, location. Why don't you allow us to put your website in a high traffic uh, location on the Internet, similar to an intersection with your physical location? Your physical location is located on between this street and this street. And uh, on average, uh, 2000 people fly through there per day. Well, I'm going to put your website in between this intersection, a.k.a. keyword and this intersection, a.k.a. another related keyword and is going to experience 10,000 uh, people going through that area that day. Oh, my God. That's how you sell it, baby. That's how you sell it. OK, so, guys. Stop trying to sell custom GPTs. Use it as bait. Stop trying to sell AI automation services. Use it as bait. Pay attention to what everybody else is charging for and say, hmm, they wouldn't be charging for it if it's not getting sales, but it's not going to last because it's going to die out like every other trend. Let me build something that's not based on the trend and sell that.